on the ledge, sir. Oh, it must be at least 20 stories. Do you think he intends to jump, sir? Now, will you please listen to me? I think he is going to jump. Just keep still and listen to me. I don't think he can hear you, sir. What you have done is not so very serious. I think you'll have to climb out to him, sir. The ledge is wide enough. I'm... A few francs stolen from someone's wallet. It happens every day of the week. I'm sure he's going to jump, sir. We've got to arrest you, but you'll be fined, that's all. He can't hear you, sir. You'll have to climb out to him. Yes. The ledge is wide enough. You can lean with your back against the roof. Yes, I, I must talk to him. I, I must. I, I must make him listen to me. Let me go, sir. Well, no, 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 no. It, it, it's my duty, Louise. Let me go, please, sir. No, no uh, Louise, don't, please. Uh, come, come back. I'll don't talk don't, don't to go. Louise, it, it's dangerous. It's you might quite slip. Easy, sir. It's easy, Louise. Ah! Louise! Obsession by Pierre Boileau and Thomas Nasjak. Translated and adapted by Michael Voisy. With Peter Jeffrey as Flavier, Sarah Bedell as Madeleine, and Nigel Stock as Paul Jevine. Obsession. The People versus Roger Flavier. Roger Flavier, you will stand before the court. Yes. Uh, Roger Flavier, in the cause of the people against you, you are charged that you did on August the 19th last willfully murder René Surange, with whom you were staying at the Hotel de France, Marseille. Uh, you will answer the questions put to you by the examining magistrate. Yes. You are a lawyer, aged 53, of 17 Rue Marachal, Paris. Yes. Is this your handwriting on this file marked Dossier Jevin? Yes. The clerk will read the dossier. April 15th, 1973. Paul Jevin, with whom I was a student and whom I had not seen for many years, came to see me with a preposterous story that his wife from time to time becomes possessed by one of her ancestors. It is my belief that this is a simple case of a wife much younger than her husband, deceiving him with a man of her own age. Uh, come in, Paul. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry you had to walk up, but the lift's not working. It's quite a climb, when you're not as young as you used to be. Yes. Um... Well, would you rather talk in here or in my sitting room? It, it, it's just through there. You see, my apartment is both my office and my home. No, we'll talk here in your office. Oh, I've come for your professional advice. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just close the window. You don't mind being on the fourth floor? No. Uh, have a drink. Thanks. Uh, what have we got? Vermouth, cognac, glass of wine? Wine, please. Right. Uh, there's some cigarettes on the desk. Uh, I'll have a cigar, if you don't mind. Uh, I've got my own. Right. Well, uh, you've put on weight, Paul. Mm. Too much good food, not enough exercise. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. I believe you're a little thinner. Ah, well. Well, uh, santé, Paul, after all these years. Santé, Roger. Uh, must be nearly 30. Must, indeed, yes, yes, yes. Mmm. It's a good wine, this. Cigar? No, thanks. No, I've, I've never developed the taste for them. I'll just have a cigarette. So you went into law after all. Mm. Well, I was in the police first for three years, and then I went to law school. I hear you specialise in inquiry work now. <coughs> yes, I, um, I found when I was practising law that before I took on a case, I often had to find the evidence for the client myself, and I thought, <coughs> well, other lawyers must have the same problem, so... With both my police and uh, legal training. Excellent, I... excellent. A man should always be something on his own. Yes, yes. Well, you, you've done very well. I, I see your photographs in the paper attending government meetings and things. You're really quite the industrialist, aren't you? Shipbuilding. We're doing very well. We've got NATO contracts oh, really? on the secret list. I see. 
So you say you've come to me for my professional advice? Uh, Roger, I want you to keep an eye on my wife. Why? She's going off the rails, is she? No, not in that way. What then? I know this sounds absurd, but the truth is there are times when Madeline lives in another world. She sees things invisible to the rest of us. Well, how did it all begin? The first spell was about a year ago. I got back from Le Havre on the Friday night. I have to spend about half the week there. We had dinner. She was perfectly cheerful. A Russian ballet company had been in Paris. We were sitting having coffee after dinner. She was playing some of the music from one of the ballets she had seen. The record ended. I asked her if she wanted it changing. But she didn't hear me. She just sat, staring at nothing. I see. Well, how often does this happen? Well, to begin with, it was once or twice a month. Then it began to be more frequent. Now it may be once a week. How long do these spells last? They can last up to an hour. Has your wife ever dabbled in spiritualism or anything to do with the supernatural? No, never. She's always laughed at people who believe in that kind of thing. Yes. You've had medical advice, I suppose. Yes. A specialist in nervous disorders. There, there's nothing wrong, medically. Mm. How old is your wife? Twenty-nine. Oh. Quite a bit younger than you. How long have you been married? Four years. Children? No. You married a little late in life. Is she your first wife? Yes. Oh, you know me, Roger. I was always ambitious. Yes, yes. Um, another glass? Thanks. <gasps> well, I'll be honest with you. You're not the first man to come to me with a similar story. My wife is very distant. She can sit for hours and say nothing. No. You say your wife sees visions poor, but I say your wife has a lover. No, not Madeline. She's not that kind of woman. Oh, that's what every man thinks about his wife. Here. Well, Roger, when Madeline's mother died a couple of years ago, Madeline inherited some of the family possessions. Amongst them an amber necklace that had belonged to her great-grandmother and a portrait of the old lady when she was young. I've caught her several times standing, staring at that portrait. She wears the necklace quite often. And now she started to do her hair in the same style as in the portrait. I tell you, Roger, when Madeline has these attacks, she is no longer my wife. <laughs> You're not telling me she becomes possessed by one of her ancestors. Yes. That is exactly what I'm saying. Oh, my dear Paul, you're letting your imagination run wild. <laughs> well, uh, how did you meet your wife? I met her in Rome. I was doing some business there. We were staying at the same hotel. Yeah. She was studying the galleries, doing some painting. She has a real talent. Oh, that's what I'm told. Uh, did she hope to make a career out of it? I mean, teaching, designing, or...? She's never had to think about earning her living. There was always money in her family. Uh-huh. Well, what made you think of coming to me? I couldn't talk to the family lawyer. I wanted somebody I could talk to personally. And then I remember the talks we had as students. Uh -huh. I remember, too, you were interested in psychology. Uh, well, yes, well, you, I mean, you couldn't hope to practice law without knowing something of the human mind. <clears throat> um, do you know why I left the police, Paul? No. I understand you resigned and went into the law. Well, yes, I always wanted to go in for the law, as you know, but, well, my father decided I should go into the police... I should have had the courage to refuse him. <coughs> well, to come to the point, I had to arrest a man. He was a petty thief of some kind. He, he tried to escape arrest by climbing out of a window onto the roof where he'd been caught. I had a young man with me, Maurice Le Riche. He was only a cadet. I was standing at the window out of which he had climbed. The building was some 20 stories high. I could see the traffic below, the cars looking like toys, the sound of the traffic like a radio turned down, the people in the street like walking dolls. The roof was a sloping one. There was a chimney behind which he was hiding. He was unarmed, and there was a ledge at least wide enough to give a footing, though it had been raining. <coughs> it was a question of 
climbing out and talking to him because he threatened to kill himself. Well, it was young Lorich who climbed out of that window, slipped and fell to his death. I remember now. You never had a head for heights. He screamed as he fell. I shall never forget that scream. It was loud when he fell, but it grew fainter until there was nothing but the sound of the traffic. You can't blame yourself, Roger. Young Lorich must have known the risks he'd have to take when he joined the police. Probably, yes. But there are certain experiences one has in life which one tries to forget, but which remain in the subconscious and frequently affect our actions. <coughs> well, I've, I've told you all this because, well, I suppose there's nothing in Madeleine's past, some guilt about somebody which might explain in some way... No, there's nothing like that. I tell you, what Madeline is doing now is entirely out of character. Well, I don't see what I can do, Paul. I'd like you to keep an eye on her, particularly on the days when I'm in the Havre. I've got to find out the truth about the whole thing. Are you free this evening? No. Pity. I'd have asked you to dinner. Yeah, well, look, go to the theatre together. Mm, I mean, I, I can have a good look at her without her knowing me. At least I'll do that. Splendid idea. We're going to the ballet tomorrow. The Marigny, we've got a box. Okay, well, all right, if, if I can get a seat, I'll be there. I'll arrange it. Now, um, don't be offended, but uh, we've got your fee to consider. Oh. Uh, would you like something on account? No, no, not now, thank you. Let's just wait and see if there's anything I can do first. Well, I must get home to Madeline at seven o'clock. Yes. I'm sorry, you'll, you'll have to use the stairs again. The lift won't be working is here. Oh, I don't mind walking downstairs. <laughs> oh, I'd uh, better give you my card. Uh, yes. Our Paris office is in the building next to Figaro, if you want to find me. Right. Well, goodbye, Paul. Roger, thanks for listening to me. Bye. Dossier Jevigne, April the 15th, 1973. Paul Jevigne, with whom I was a student and whom I have not seen for many years, came to see me with a preposterous story that his wife from time to time becomes possessed by one of her ancestors. It is my belief that this is a simple case of a wife much younger than her husband deceiving him with a man of her own age. Dossier Juvigne, April the 16th, 1973. Tonight, at the Marigny Theatre, I saw Madeleine Jevigne, a beautiful, sensitive woman. She's unhappy, of course. Paul has worked up this ridiculous story instead of seeing that she's bored to death with him. I cannot do what he asks me, though I've done it a thousand times before. It seems in bad taste. It never has before. Yeah. Paul. Oh, hello. Have I woken you? No, no, no. I, I was just making some coffee. I saw you at the theatre last night. Yes. What did you think of her? <laughs> She's very beautiful. I asked Madeline what she was doing this afternoon. She said she was going out for a walk. That'll be about two o'clock. She lunches early. Uh, did I give you the, the address? Hmm. Avenue Clébert? Yes. 76? Y yes. Apartment 43? Yes, you did, Paul, Roger, but I don't think I'm really... I'm always that. worried when I'm not with her. There was something so quiet about her. Yes, Paul, but Go honestly... Go about it in your own way. I give you a free hand. As soon as you have anything to tell me, give me a ring at the office, or better still, come and see me. All I ask is that Madeline is kept absolutely in the dark. If she thought she was being watched... Paul, look, don't you think it I would... I can't talk now. I've got a meeting. Uh, do what you can. Goodbye. Dossier Jevigne, April the 17th. I followed Madeleine Jevigne this afternoon. She went to the cemetery at Passy, to the grave of her great-grandmother, Pauline Lajolac. I have no doubt this is a subterfuge for a meeting with somebody. She's an elegant woman, wears a distinctive perfume, violets fresh from the earth, it lingered a long time after she'd hurried away. April the 18th. 
I again followed Madeleine Juvigne. Her clothes are expensive, well cut. She seems always to wear black and grey, high-heeled shoes. She walked by the Seine and sat looking into the water for two hours. It would appear that again she was waiting to meet somebody, but nobody appeared. I don't know why, but I don't want to follow this woman. Oh, can I help you, sir? I'd like to see Monsieur Jovigne. Have you an appointment? Uh, Monsieur Jovigne will see me. My card. Oh, just a moment. There's a Monsieur Flavier to see you. Please show him in. You can go in. Thank you. Hello, Roger. Is there something wrong? No, no. There's nothing wrong. Well, grand officers you've got. Oh, I'm not sure I like this modern American style. You've seen Madeleine? Hmm. Yesterday she went and sat looking into the river, and the day before she went to the cemetery at Passy. Passy? To the grave of Pauline Lajalac. You see, Roger, she is obsessed by this dead woman. That's a fine photograph of her. Hmm? Oh. Uh, it was taken the year before all this. It's uh, one of my favourites. Hello, yes. Oh, oh, it's you, my dear. Uh, I, I, I was going to ring you. And uh, the thing is, I've got meetings at the Ministry all day. My dear, it is a little difficult now. Uh, I'll ring you back as soon as I can. Goodbye. Mademoiselle, how many times have I told you not to put anybody through to me direct? Modern office equipment is more efficient than the human being these days. <laughs> now, you must admit, it's an extraordinary thing to visit the grave of an ancestor who's been dead 80-odd years. Paul, I've been thinking of getting away for a month or two. I've been overworking for some time now. Roger, uh, the responsibilities of a man in my position are sometimes more than I can take. I'm going to be worried by Madeline. Don't let me down. Not now. All right, all right. I'll, I'll carry on with the case for another week or two. Thank you, Roger. You don't know how much I appreciate this. Oh, good afternoon, monsieur. Uh, good afternoon, concierge. I'm sorry if you're wanting a room. We're full. It's the English visitors this time of the year. No, no, no. I, I don't want a room. Uh, here's my card. I'm a lawyer. Oh, yes, monsieur. Yes, the lady who just came in. Madame Juvigne? Yes, that's right. Um, well, thank you, monsieur. Uh, not at all. Does Madame Juvigne visit somebody staying here? No, uh, Madame Juvigne took a room here. Well, does anybody visit her here? No. Does she receive letters? No. What's the number of her room? She wanted number 19 on the third floor, which looks onto the courtyard. She knew exactly which room she wanted. I thought she must have stayed here some time and I'd forgotten her. I see. Does she keep the room permanently? She has it by the month. At least she took it for one month. Yes? Monsieur Flavier to speak to you. Put him through. Yes, Roger? There's nothing wrong. Do you know of any reason why your wife should visit a house in the Rue des Saintes-Pères? No. But I do remember my mother-in-law pointing out to me a house in the Rue des Saintes-Pères where Pauline Lajalac had lived after she was married. It's a block of flats now. Madame? Yes? How much is my coffee? Two francs, madame. Where is the nearest post box? It's a little further down the quay, madame. Uh, I can post the letter for you. Oh, thank you, but I, I would rather post it myself. Uh, madame, as one goes further down the quay, the, uh, the men are not very polite. I would rather post it myself. Thank you for the loan of your pen. Thank you, madame. Good day. Good day. Oh, 
happened? They're having a cup of coffee. She has to borrow a pen. Oh, please, madame, hold my jacket. Yes, monsieur. Yes. Hold on, I'm coming. She sat right in the letter. Oh. We've reached her. Hold on, monsieur. Oh, it's not easy for him. She's determined to die. Please, please don't oh. get her out. Yes, monsieur. No. Madame, no. Just relax your body, will you? She asked me where the post box was. Here, madame, take my hand. Now, monsieur, you hold her by the waist. Now, madame, try and ease yourself up. You're still alive, madame. You want to thank God and your friend. She just stood on the edge of the key, tearing up the letter. Uh, madame, will you please help me get her up? Yes. 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 No. Uh, Slowly does it. Uh, up you come. Oh, oh, oh. Up. Yeah. You know, you nearly killed me as well. Oh. You are. You're not dead. It doesn't hurt to die. You've been very stupid. Oh. Come on. Pull yourself together. Come on, come on. Stand up. Try to walk. You'd better come inside the beast trail. Yes, thank you. Oh, can you manage? Yes, I think so. All right. Carefully, then. I'm all right, really. <coughs> Come in, madame. Oh, monsieur, you better get yourself dried. Yes. You think you can lend us some clothes? I can find something, but they won't be very smart. Uh, madame had better come into my bedroom. Uh, thank you. You can make it a hot drink or something, milk, cognac, something yes, like that. Yes, monsieur, yes. Come with me, madame. Oh, thank you. Is there anything to get home in? Yeah. Can I get a taxi here? Yeah. Yes, the telephone's there. There's a number on the wall. They know us. Uh, uh, Bistro Vincent. We... <laughs> we haven't introduced ourselves. I'm Madame Jevine. I'm a lawyer, Monsieur Flavier. Oh, you're angry with me. I really don't know what happened. I do. You've tried to kill yourself. It's not what you think. I wanted to throw myself into the water, but I swear I don't know why. Oh, come along. What about the letter you wrote? It was for my husband. Why did you tear it up? What I was trying to tell him was so extraordinary that I couldn't explain it. But why did you choose the Porte Chaillot? I just found myself walking there. Do you think it is possible to die and then live again in somebody else? There are people who believe in such theories. You think I'm mad? No. No, 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 I, I don't think that. Where are we going? Well... I should have taken you home, but I would like to talk to you first. I'm not mad, I assure you. Uh, this is my sitting room. I'm afraid it's all in a bit of a mess. I'm not married and much too busy to look after myself properly. I like a little disorder. It makes everything more homely. Oh, oh excuse me. As a client, I expect I have no friends. Please, do, do sit down. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Roger? Oh, hello, Paul. I've been trying to get you for quite a time. I'm worried. I don't know why. Madeline was very quiet this morning. Have you seen her today? Um, look, I'll phone you later. Well, she went for a walk. Uh, sorry, it's difficult to talk now. But w would you tell me one thing quickly? Is there anything you know about this woman, Pauline Lajolac? No. Only that she committed suicide. Hmm into the Seine. It was uh, down the river, the Port Chaillot. Do you know why she chose that part of the river? No. Nobody knows. I see. Well, thanks for telling me. I, I, I must ring off now. I have a client. Goodbye. I'm sorry. Now, would you like some coffee? Yes, please. Can I help? Well, you can come and talk to me. Tell me, do you love your husband? I married him. And is there nobody else in your life? No. And you don't know what made you go down to that part of the sand? I can't explain it. See. The coffee will only be a few moments. But I can't get rid of the feeling that my past goes a long way back. 
much further than the memories of the child that was me. I can recall things I've never seen. Often faces, often whole scenes. Yes, well, I, I think quite a few people who have these impressions one time or another. Oh, impressions, yes, but some of my recollections are so vivid. Every day I have an increasingly strong feeling that my real life lies behind me. No, you shouldn't talk like that. You must think of your husband. Oh, I do. A great deal. Will you have tea with me tomorrow afternoon? Yes. I should like to talk to somebody. <laughs> Where would you like to go? Galerie Lafayette. The roof terrace. I go there sometimes. I like to see the people there. They always seem to be enjoying themselves. You painted for a time. Yes, uh, quite seriously. I've never understood art, painting. I wish I could. Music? Do you like music? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I listen a lot. I, I live alone, you see, so it's wonderful company. You've never married? No. May I ask why? I can't believe it's because nobody has ever wanted to marry you. <laughs> I've always been rather shy. You will meet somebody and be very happy one day. I know you will. Do you think so? You're a kind person. You deserve happiness. I'd like to see your paintings. I've given it all up. Suddenly, I, I, I couldn't find any meaning to it. No, I'd still like to see them. Isn't this a wonderful view? Look. Look down on the street. It all seems so tiny. Up here, I feel a great sense of freedom. Come here, to the edge. Look. Oh, you're so... Are you unwell? Uh, um, I've no head for heights. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, would you? It's all right, it'll pass. I'm sorry. I doubt whether you'd like my paintings. My husband calls them abstracts, but they're dreams, really. Do you dream in colour? No, I don't, no. Um, everything's grey with me, like a photograph. Dreams are so much more beautiful than reality. But you've hardly told me anything about yourself. Well, my life's been quite ordinary. I should have made more of it. Why didn't you? I've lacked belief in myself. It's as simple as that. I have belief. I don't know what exactly. I, I didn't have it until recently. The past year, I think. Mm -hmm. I did have ambition. You're still looking pale. Yes, if you'll excuse me, I think I must go down. Would you like me to call a doctor? No, 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 no. Once I get down, I'll be all right. Dossier Juvin, May the 1st. We're meeting every day now. I can talk to her. She listens to me. <coughs> I've never had any success with women. I've never found the courage. Oh, a prostitute from time to time. But Madeleine Jovin gives me courage. <laughs> I'm in love with her. Why did she marry Paul? Oh, Paul said there's always been money in her family. I've walked through the Louvre once before on the arm of a man, but that was long, long ago. Is that just an impression, or is that one of the things you say you can recollect vividly? Just an impression, but I was in love with him. I wasn't married to him. There was a room in the house where I lived where I used to write to him. One day he told me he was going to be married, and I wanted to die. Mm. I, I think we've all felt that there was somebody we've loved and yet have never known. Another of the things I see vividly is a little town. I don't even know whether it is in France, but there are times when I walk through it as if I had always known it. A river runs through the middle. On the right bank, there's a Gallic Roman triumphal arch. And if you climb up an avenue of poplar trees, you can see an amphitheater. And behind it, grapevines and a herd of sheep. I know that town. It's Saint, and the river is the Charente. I've often wondered where it was. And there is a little fountain. The fountain of Saint Estelle. And behind the amphitheatre, a tall church with a very old tower. Saint Eutrope. I must have lived there once. When you were a child, perhaps? No, in a former existence. <sighs> where were you born? In the Ardennes. My father had paper mills there. He had many other business interests, too. But the family originally came from Paris. Hmm. Did you have any of these recollections or impressions when you were young? No, they began about a year ago. 
It seemed to me that I wasn't in my own home, that I wasn't living with my husband, but with a stranger. Do you know the feeling of waking up and not knowing where you are? Now, Len, there's a question I've got to ask you. Had you thought of trying to kill yourself before that day, and have you thought about it since? No, neither before that day nor since. But, Roger, I didn't want to kill myself. It was an impulse drawing me into the unknown. Do you realize that I've come to love you? Yes. Perhaps if we had met at another time... You're not angry with me? I could never be angry with you. <sighs> Would you like to walk a little? Have a cup of coffee? No, I'm rather tired. I think I shall go home. Oh, you've turned pale. You sound afraid. I'm tired, that's all. I've nothing to be afraid of. Well, I have a little present for you. What is it? Go on, open it. A cigarette lighter. To my Eurydice. Why do you call me Eurydice? Or wasn't Orpheus inconsolable when he lost her? Oh, yes. You're right. You must lose me one day and soon, perhaps. Thank you, Roger. Shall we see each other tomorrow? Yes, of course, my dear. Shall we go into the country for the afternoon? Yes, that would be pleasant. I shall ring you tomorrow. No, 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 no. Please, you, you must never telephone me. I rarely answer the phone myself. It could be the housekeeper or even my husband. Sometimes he works on papers at home. I will telephone you. June the 15th. I believe she loves me. I do not know why she should, but I believe that she does. I think it is best we do not see each other again. Not only for my sake, but for her own. Come in, Roger. Thank you. Please sit down. Thanks. Uh, you look tired, Paul. Oh, you've no idea the life I lead. There are times when I'd like to run away from the whole thing. Yes, well, at least you have a beautiful wife. Yes. Paul, I'm not going on with it. My dear fellow. Apart from the fact I've become friendly with your wife, the truth is there's nothing I can do. Your wife does have some affinity with the past, but she's not the only person, and I don't think she will attempt suicide again. Oh, <laughs> please. Give it another fortnight. Oh, dear, I, I... I haven't told you this. It's confidential. But our government contract has been extended for ten years. They're going to finance the rebuilding of our yards at La Havre. It means we've got to live there. I shall buy a house. It'll become our permanent home for the next few years. Does Madeleine know? Of course. Hmm. Well, it, it will be better for her if she leaves Paris. Yes. I shall be able to spend more time with her. And she will have the new house. Very well, Paul. If it's only for a fortnight. Oh, thank you, Roger. Thank you. Hmm. By the way... Do you know if she's ever been to Sant? Sant? No, I'm sure she hasn't. She described it to me exactly as if she'd been there, but not as it is now, as it was years ago. I've never heard her mention Sant. But her mother mentioned it as a town where their family had connections. Mm. Well, could she have seen photographs? Well, anybody might see an old photograph of Paris, Nice, anywhere. That doesn't enable them to describe it, does it? Mm. Well, we've never been in that part of the country. Well, what about Pauline Lajolac? Could she have lived there? I don't know. <laughs> Your wife describes a place which we must presume at some time was known to Pauline Lajolac, and she describes it as it was a century ago. I can't explain it. You don't mind me driving? No, but you don't look well. You're very pale. I have a headache. I've had a lot to think about. So why do you want to drive? And so fast? I thought it might clear my head. Your perfume reminds me of violets when it's been raining. It's a perfume like any other. Are you upset about something? Is it because of what I've said about loving you? No, but we mustn't think about it, Roger. It cannot be. I've never seen you wear that necklace before. No, it belonged to my great-grandmother. I'm very fond of it. You don't find amber necklaces today. 
This is what I like doing, just taking whatever road turns up without thinking. You're driving too fast. Sometimes I wish it was possible to stop thinking altogether. Madeleine, please let's stop. I had decided it was better we shouldn't see each other again. Please don't let's talk about it. But you can't go on living with Paul. You don't love him. I do love him in many ways. And I love you too. If I've met you and not him... I... Do you know where we are? No, no, I don't. But let's stop, please. Look, we might be able to have some coffee. If you slow down, there's a signpost there. San Nicola. Let's stop for a while, please. All right. We'll stop for a while. I like these old country village squares. It's very deserted. They still have a siesta in some of these towns. Sant was like this. Mm. Have to wait for summer to open before we can have a coffee. I don't think I like the church. It's a strange mixture. Part Romanesque, part modern. It isn't good. The tower's too tall for the rest of it. I want to go in. It looks mm, and smells neglected. Stale incense. You should always let fresh air into a church. The smell of dead flowers, too. Mm. Oh, there's a notice here. The priest, having to minister to several parishes, is only able to say Mass once a week on Sunday at 11 o'clock. I suppose that's why the place looks so neglected. What are you thinking, Madeleine? If there is a God, why does he cause people to do such terrible things? You've been upset all the afternoon. Now, what is wrong? It's nothing. It's nothing at all. There's the confessional. If there's something worrying you, well, we're taught in the confessional. We can leave all our past behind. I can't confess my sins to a priest. I can only confess them to God. Uh, no, look, that's not the door out. That just leads to the tower. Let's have a look. No, Madeleine, let's drive on somewhere else. It won't take many minutes. Madeleine, don't go up the tower. Madeleine, please, let's drive on. No, Madeline. I can't. I can't. The view up here is quite beautiful and I'm only halfway. Madeline, please, don't go any higher. Come on. Every time you go around, the view is more beautiful. Oh. Do come up. Well, I'll try, Madeline. I'll try. Oh, my God, I can't. I feel sick. I can't climb any higher. Roger, come on. It's so beautiful. It's just like that awful day with Laurie. Roger, do hurry. Oh, I must try. I must. Oh, hot. I feel hot. I, I can feel the perspiration in my hands. Roger. Madeleine, I can't. Roger. 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 I must try. Ah, the door to the bell tower itself. Oh, God, I can't look down. I cannot look. It's locked. Madeleine! Madeleine? Madeleine, where are you? Why has she locked the door? Oh, no. Perhaps she... Madeleine! Madeleine! Oh, I won't stop. There's a turret window at the side of the door. I could climb out. Yes. The ledge is wide enough. It's, it's wide enough to take my feet. Yeah, no. God, I can't. I cannot look down. It's too easy to slip. Let me go, please. Sir. It's my duty, Larish. I'll go. I'll talk to him. Larish, don't. Come back. It's quite easy, sir. from the bell tower. Oh. I'll, I'll go for the doctor. Too late for a doctor. What's happened? A suicide. From the bell tower. <gasps> it, it 
could have been an accident. Let us send for the police. Dossier Jevigne, June the 19th. Today I drove into the country with Madeleine. I was going to ask her to leave Paul. She killed herself. I shall have to tell Paul. I shall have to tell him that I could not save her. I shall have to tell him I killed her as assuredly as I killed Maurice Le Riche. Roger, why have you come here to my home? Ah, are those your wife's paintings? Yes. And that's Pauline Lajolac? Yes. The self-portrait. And wearing the necklace your wife inherited. Have you been drinking? Yes. You better come in. Roger, what's happened? I've just come to tell you I've made up my mind and I'm finished with the whole thing. Roger, what's happened? She's not here. Haven't you seen her today? No. Now, I did arrange to meet her at Maison Royale for a cup of coffee, but she didn't turn up. Roger, Madeline was not here when I got home. She's not here now. Something has happened. She's left you. She has a lover. I said so the first day you came to see me. There's no lover, Roger. Something has happened to Madeline. I know it. <laughs> and so do you. What should I do? Phone the police? <laughs> Telephone the police because your wife's not home to dinner. They'd laugh at you. Roger, you're hiding something from me. Now, what is it? Why have you come here? Why didn't you telephone me at the office if you'd something to tell me? No, I, I, I just popped in. You know, I, I don't have many people to talk to. I, uh... hmm. Yes, and now I must go. Something has happened to Madeline. I know it has. She's never this late. No, she's probably called to see someone and forgotten the time. For God's sake, Roger, stay. Stay until she comes home, or telephones, or we have some news. I can't just wait here alone. No, I can't stay, Paul. Sorry. Have to see somebody. Have to go. But you'll hear from her. Roger? Yes? Are you still asleep? Yes. Madeline killed herself yesterday afternoon. Huh? She threw herself from the church tower at San Nicola. So, uh, where's that? A village between Saïa and Drocco. Oh. She was taken to the hospital at Nantes. Well, uh, are you going? I've just returned. The police asked me to go with them. I, I had to identify the body. She was barely recognizable. I tried to get hold of you to come with me, but I couldn't get any reply. I must have slept heavily this morning. The police have started an inquiry. Oh, yeah, well, they have to, though it's obviously suicide. They're puzzled about one or two things. Why she should have gone so far to do it. I shall have to tell them about the obsession she had. Yes, you'll have to tell them about that. Roger, are you sure you didn't see Madeline yesterday? Yes, of course I'm sure. Uh, Roger... I must tell them that I came to see you. Yes, you must. They'll probably want to see you. Probably. You'll uh, tell them about her strange fancies? Her obsessions? Yes, I shall have to. You'll tell them about the suicide attempt at the Port Chaillot? I'll tell them what I can. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, thank you. Mm. Goodbye for now, Roger. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello? Paul? You shouldn't have run. I read in the papers about your wife. Yes. It's been a great shock. Oh, I'm sure. Um, when can I see you? I don't think you should come to the house. When can we meet? I'm sure everything will be all right. Has anything else happened? I'm sure everything will be all right. I want you to go to Nice. I'll meet you at the Gare Austerlitz tomorrow night, six o'clock. Yes. Monsieur Roger Flavier? Yes. 
Inspector Lemoyne. Oh, yes, Inspector, yes. Uh, please come in. Thank you. Sit down. I believe you knew Madame Madeleine Javin. She... Yes, uh, yes, Monsieur Javin has told me. Ah. I understand he consulted you about his wife. Yes, numerous men do. Husband suspects his wife of having a lover. And? I followed her for a week or two. Was there a man involved? No. A woman ceases to be attracted to her husband. He thinks she has a lover, but often as not, there isn't. It's happened a hundred times before. It'll happen a hundred times again. And that is all, monsieur? That is all. Your cognac, monsieur. Uh, monsieur? What? Oh, yes, thank you. You've been asking about the accident. It's 20 metres up that belfry and she fell head first. Hmm, so I've been told. It is now a month since Madeleine killed herself. I again went to Saint Nicolas. I do not know why. I cannot help feeling Madeleine is not dead. There is malicious talk about her death. I shall have to tell Paul the truth. Yes, monsieur. Monsieur Juvigne, is he at home? Didn't you hear it on the news, sir, or read about it? Monsieur Juvigne was killed over two weeks ago. Killed? Yes, sir, driving back to La Havre. No, 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 I didn't know. His mind wasn't on his driving. It was the police. Such terrible questions they asked. Was Monsieur at home that afternoon? What time did Madame go out? Did Madame go out alone? I told them Madame went out about half past one. I'm sure she said she was going to have a cup of coffee with Monsieur. But they would have it that he had driven her out into the country that afternoon. Yes, I know that. She killed herself, Monsieur. It's very sad. She never had any life with him. He was always working. And I'm certain that she thought he had somebody else. She always looked so unhappy. I felt really sorry for her poor soul. August the 20th. Paul, too, has been killed. Am I responsible for his death, too? I must... Try to put the whole thing behind me. The dossier Javigne is now closed. A glass of wine, Charles? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, it's six o'clock. The office can be closed now. Monsieur Flavier, hmm? may I say something to you? Yes? May I say you're drinking too much? Yes, perhaps I am. I will be completely frank, Monsieur Flavier. It is now over a year since I made an investment in your business. I not only naturally expected to benefit from your knowledge and experience... Of course. I naturally also expected to have a reasonable return on my investment. Yes, of course. But it seems to me that you are taking less and less interest. I'm sorry, Charles, I hadn't realised. I'm sorry to have to speak to you about it. You see, Charles, just over a year ago, the woman I loved was killed. Oh, I... I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I thought if I took you into partnership, it would help me forget. It would inject new interest into my affairs. Um, I'm sorry. It's as well we have spoken, Monsieur Flavier. Perhaps matters will prove to be a little better now. I hope so, yes. Sure you won't have a glass of wine? Uh, uh, quite sure. Uh, Monsieur Flavier, perhaps I've spoken a little unkindly. Would you have dinner with me tonight? No, 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 no. It's quite all right. I, I, well, I had thought of going to the cinema. This week in France... President Giscard d'Estaing 
visits the naval dockyards of Marseille. On his drive through the streets, the president was greeted by cheering crowds, many of whom had been oh lining God, the bases since possible. early morning. Oh, At the dockyard, What's the, the president inspected several vessels well? and spoke yes, to a number yes. of dockyard employees. I, I shall be all right, thank you. He later went on to have Excuse lunch me, with civic you? dignitaries, Excuse me, where he you. announced plans. July the 15th, 1975. Tonight I went to the cinema. The newsreel this week in France showed the visit of the president to Marseille. Standing outside the Hotel Waldorf watching the procession was Madeleine. She was with a man. I stayed to see the newsreel twice, so it is not my imagination. The man was holding her arm. Her husband, her lover. She's put on weight. Her face is more rounded. Her hairstyle is different, but it is Madeleine. I have reopened the dossiers of Eden. Flavier, I telephoned last night. Ah, yes. Will you please register, Monsieur Flavier? Yes, thank you. Will you be staying long, Monsieur? Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, two days, certainly. Thank you, Monsieur. I hope you enjoy your stay in Marseille. Yes, thank you. Could you tell me exactly when the president was here? A week ago, last Friday. A week ago, yes. Did you by any chance notice a gentleman staying here? Uh, Middle-aged, with a pearl type in. He had a lady with him, 31 or 2, wearing a mink coat. This is the Waldorf Hotel, Monsieur Flavier. Your description would fit many people. Are you dining alone, monsieur? Yes, yes. Um, I'll have the hors d'oeuvre. Hors d'oeuvre. Uh, blanquette de veau. Blanquette de veau. And a bottle of Médoc, please. A bottle of Médoc, yes. Thank you, sir, no, monsieur. Uh, just a moment, just a waiter. H have you seen a lady and gentleman dining here? The gentleman's perhaps nearing 60. He wears a large type in. And the lady's a little over 30. And her hair is blonde, nearly down to her shoulders. Monsieur, I could think of many people. Uh, yes, yes. Of course. No, I just thought some friends of mine might have been staying here, but there's no reason why they should. No, monsieur. Morning, sir. Morning. My bill, please. Oh, leaving us so quickly? Yes. Have you a railway timetable? Yes, sir. Uh, where to? Paris. Ah, uh, you are... You are too late for the repeat, sir, but there is the express at midday. Very well, I'll take the midday. <sighs> My God! Monsieur? The man just going out and the woman with him. Do you know his name? Uh, Monsieur Almarien. Almarien. What does he do? Oh, he buys and sells. Mm. <laughs> Nobody quite knows why. But he does know how to make money. Is that his wife? No, he never keeps the same one for long. Mademoiselle René Sourange. René Sourange. Mm. Uh, monsieur, do you want me to try and get you a reservation on the train? What? Um, no. No, I think I'll stay another day or two. Yes, monsieur. Hotel Waldorf, July the 17th. It was not my imagination. The woman is Madeleine. Her clothes are expensive, but they're not Madeleine's taste. The eyes are the same, sad and far away. As she went out of the hotel, she recognized me. There was a sudden, startled look on her face. Is there anything else, monsieur? No, thank you. Waiter, the lady sitting with the gentleman there in the corner. Do you know anything about her? They've been here for about a month. Uh, that's all I can tell you, monsieur. I'm sure I knew her in Paris. Yes, monsieur. Excuse me, madame. Yes? <laughs> I apologize for taking advantage of the absence of your friend. He's been called to the telephone. I am Monsieur Flavier. Yes, monsieur? 
Oh, didn't we once know each other? I don't remember ever meeting you, monsieur. You don't remember that we had tea together once at Galerie Lafayette, visited the Louvre together? The last time I saw you was when we drove into the country to Saint Nicolas. I'm sorry, but you are mistaken, monsieur. It is. It is, Madeleine. Her colors of her clothes are wrong, the shoes are wrong, her earrings are in bad taste, the nails too brightly colored, but the perfume is the same. Violets and fresh earth. Monsieur Flavier. Yes, monsieur? I waited until I saw Monsieur Almarien leave. I want to talk to you. Some other time. I must talk to you. Very well. You look upset. Is there something wrong? You're packing. Are you leaving Marseille? Uh, it's not a particularly unusual story. Monsieur Almarien has thrown me out. I'm sorry. Where will you go? I'll find a small hotel. I decide what to do. I shall find someone for you. For both of us. No, monsieur. I couldn't agree to that. Why not? Why not? I don't know you. I don't go and live with any man who speaks to me over a dinner table and then knocks at my door. No, no. That is not the reason. You recognised me in the hotel yesterday. How could I have recognised you? I cannot explain it. But you are not only Mademoiselle René Sourange, you are also Madame Madeleine Jovigne. Paul Jovigne was an old friend of mine. Madeleine's wife killed herself. She jumped from the top of the church at Saint Nicolas. Well, how can I be somebody who has killed herself? I don't know. Well, where is Saint Nicolas? It's a village outside Paris. Have you been ill, Monsieur? I have not been well since that day. It's, it's preyed on my mind a great deal. Did you love this woman? Oh, yes, I loved her. She's the only woman I've loved in my whole life. And Madeleine loved me. <laughs> that was the extraordinary thing. She loved me. And I remind you of this, Madeleine. Yes. Well... As we both seem to be lost in the world, perhaps we should stay together for a while. But not here. It's too expensive. <laughs> and I don't want to meet Almarien again. How long are you going to be in the shower? Just a few minutes. I want to go for a walk. Uh, come in. Excuse me, sir. Oh, yeah. A letter, sir. It's marked deliver immediately. Oh, thank you. Just a minute. Ah, here you are. Ah, thank you, thank you very much, sir. Mr. Flavier, I've credited as you request the sum mentioned below to Credit Lyonnais at Marseille. I regret you intend remaining from the office longer than you first stated. Bad news. Bad news? It's from my office. Business hasn't been good this past year. I don't like your hair like that. Can't you do it differently? How? Well, combed back off the face, high on the head. Madeleine wore her hair like that. Yes. Roger, I am René Sourange. I was born in Dombremont in the Vosges, a tiny village on the river. My parents were killed in the war. I was looked after by neighbours. Ten years ago, I went to live in Paris. I tried working at Haute Couture, and then I met Almarien. There were others before him. I never had any talent to make a living. Yes, but deep in your mind, you've no impression, no feeling or memory. Well, how could I remember anything about a woman who is dead? Don't you remember the Porte Chaillot? No. Or my cigarette light? If you go on asking me all these questions... Monsieur, madame, can I help you? Dresses, the most elegant you have. Roger, this is all too expensive. Yeah, monsieur, we have the new collection from Maison Roche. That one. The black? Try it on. Roger, I don't like black. I like colours. Try it on. Ah, here comes madame. Mm. 
Madeleine. Do you like it? Your earrings. Take them off. Very well. Yes. Now you look more... More like Madeleine. Where's the shoe department? Third floor, monsieur. Yes, monsieur. Shoes, please. Black, high heels. Of course. Uh, will these suit, madame? Yes. They're uh, exactly what we want. Madame's size. I prefer what I'm wearing, lower heels. What size? Three. Here we are, madame. Size three. I really prefer my own. Try them on. Oh, she, please. Try them on. Very well. Oh, they're a perfect fit. Oh, madame, very elegant. Does monsieur like them? Yes. They're exactly the kind of shoes madame used to wear. There's a mirror here. Madame, would you like to see how they look? No, I'd rather... Come on, look. You're hurting my arm. Look! That woman you're looking at, that's not René Sauvage. That's Madeleine Jovine. I'm going back to the hotel. You're crying. There's something wrong. Please tell me. I just want to be myself. Is that so difficult to understand? Oh, don't cry, please. Your face looks like it did the day I pulled you out of the Seine. Your makeup's running. Oh, for God's sake, leave me alone. Madeleine. I'm not Madeleine. You're obsessed by this woman. You are Madeleine. Oh, you've too much makeup on. Madeleine hardly ever wore any. And your hair is still wrong. But nevertheless, you I'm are... I'm going to have my bath. She is Madeleine. She is. Uh, a passport. She must have a passport. What? Sourange. René Catherine. But this. You are Madeleine. What are you doing looking through my. my passport? You see? Sourange, René Catherine, born 16th October in Dombremont, and, and you... this? This necklace I found in your drawer? This just a necklace? This necklace belonged to Pauline Lajolac, Madeleine's great-grandmother. I've seen it only once, but I have seen it. Madeleine was wearing it the day she was killed. And now... you are wearing it. Uh, Marianne gave it to me. I don't believe you. He bought it in Paris, an antique shop in the Rue du Faubourg Saint-Honoré. When? Six months, a year ago. He'd some business in Paris. We'd had some quarrel. He wanted to make it up. Mm -hmm. And this lighter? You've seen this before? What? No. You have seen this lighter before. No. You asked me why I'd called you Eurydice, and I said it was because when Orpheus lost Eurydice, he was inconsolable. I must leave you. When I left the church at Saint Nicolas, Madeleine's handbag had been thrown to one side of the square. It had burst open. I picked the lighter up. I can't stay with you. No, listen to it. Listen, listen, listen. There's nothing to be frightened of. Pauline Lajolac was reborn in Madeleine because in her lifetime she could not find happiness. She was married, but she loved somebody else. I know that. Now, Madeleine Jovine has been reborn in you because she was not allowed the happiness she should have found with me. Was meant that we should meet again. Please, please, can't you forget the past? My life has not been happy either. No, it's quite true. I am still in love with her. I'm in love with you too. It's one and the same love. A love such as no man has ever known before. Please, I'm tired. I must go to bed. Tomorrow we will decide what is to be done. No, no, no. Let me go on. Um, I'll tell you something now which I've only realized to myself in the past few days. I've always been afraid of death. I came to believing in the Christian God because of the promise of the resurrection. The body wrapped in the linen cloth. And then the third day... Oh, yes, I used to think about that third day. When I was a boy, I used to go into an empty cave and shout into it. But no one rose from the dead. When I saw you... I saw Madeleine born again, and I believed my shout was answered. 
The trams. I can't stand the noise of the trams. I loved Madeleine. I love you. Please, stop, please. I'm tired. I must go to bed. Good morning. Oh, what's the time? Nearly 12. We've slept late. Don't, don't brush your hair downwards like that. You don't like it this way, do you? No, I don't. Give me the brush. Well, having your hair on your shoulders doesn't suit you at all. Your hair is the same colour as Madeleine's, but Madeleine's was darker. Ah, there. See? It needs taking back and upwards off your face. It shows the line of your cheekbones. If you like it that way, that's the way I'll wear it. I'm going to finish my dressing, then I'm going out for a while. Where? I have some shopping to do which wouldn't interest you. Stockings, makeup. You stay in the hotel until I come back. We'll have a late lunch. Yes, monsieur? Uh, good afternoon. I was wondering... Uh, I'm sorry, sir. If you're looking for a room, I've just let the last one. No, 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 I don't want a room. The lady in grey who's just been here... She has just booked a room for a day or two. I thought I recognised her as an old acquaintance. What name did she give? Oh. Um, ah. Madame Pauline Lajolaque. Thank you for the loan of your pen. Thank you, madame. Where is there a post box? Just a little further down the quay. Thank you. Give me that letter. Let me go. I've been following you since you left the hotel. Why have you come down to this part of the quay? Were you going to throw yourself in the river? No, I'm just going away by myself. We're going back to the hotel. Let me go, please. Not now. You're hurting me. Let me go. Now I want the truth. When you left the hotel, you went to the hairdressers. You had your hair tinted the same colour as Madeleine's. How did you know what colour her hair was? I am Renée Sourange. Oh, no. Now you are Madeleine. It is better for both of us if I just go away. You have booked a room at a hotel. You have given your name as Pauline Lajolac. Yes, I gave my name as Pauline Lajolac. You are Madeleine. You can remember Pauline Lajolac? No, I cannot remember Pauline Lajolac. Then this afternoon... The pension. The key. I knew you would follow me. You want to believe I am your Madeleine. You will not believe I am René Sourange. You do not know me. You do not want to know me. I loved Madeleine. I love you. You do not love me. You believe only in Madeleine. You've made me wear clothes that Madeleine would wear. You are Madeleine. No. But I decided to become your Madeleine. My hair is the same now. The same style, the same colour. I gave the name of Pauline Lajolac at the hotel. I knew you would believe it was something only Madeleine would do. But you sat writing a letter on the key. I went down to the key. I knew you would keep following me. I sat and I wrote a letter. I intended to post it to you and then escape somewhere where I could start all over again. I hoped you would believe that your Madeleine had come back to you and then disappeared again. I hoped you'd be happy living with your memories of her. You went down to a lower part of the quay just as Madeleine did in Paris. You sat writing a letter just as she did. Now, I never told you about that. How could you know about it unless you are Madeleine? Why do you open the window? I must have some air. I feel faint. The way you're looking down now. Down into the street. It's the same expression you had the first night I saw you at the theatre. You were looking down then, lost in some world of your own. <sighs> yes. I am your Madeleine. <coughs> Why have you closed it? Well, you might have jumped just as she... No! I couldn't have jumped as she jumped. You recognised me the first time I saw you at the Waldorf. I recognised you. And I should have found some excuse to leave the hotel immediately. Why didn't you tell me then? Oh, I should never have come to live with you. 
How could I know that you had become so obsessed with the woman you knew as Madeleine Javine? I loved you. You know that. The woman you knew in Paris. The woman you saw in the theatre with Paul. The woman you followed to the cemetery, the Rue des saint pères The Porte Chaillot. The woman to whom you gave the lighter. The woman you drove to the church at Saint-Nicolas. That woman never was Madeleine Javine. But that night at the ballet, you were with Paul. No! That was me, René Soulange. The woman who died was Madeleine Javigne, his wife. I was Paul's mistress. His mistress? Madeleine was a wealthy woman. Oh, yes, there was always money in her family. She was the real owner of the business. Paul only became chairman and managing director after they were married. Paul always wanted to be something, but it wasn't in him. He didn't want to go and live in the Havre with Madeleine. He wanted me. But if Madeleine died, he would inherit everything. You mean Madeleine was murdered? There was no other way. He was then going to sell. We were going to leave the country. Her death was to look like suicide and... I was to be the witness. Yes. Paul wanted somebody who would be able to give evidence at the inquest that his wife had already made one attempt at suicide because she had become obsessed with the memory of her dead great-grandmother. Paul didn't think this all up by himself. Everything Paul told you about Pauline Nagelac was the truth. She did drown. Madeleine did inherit the portrait and the necklace. Madeleine's obsession? <laughs> well, I always did have a lively imagination. Oh. All makes sense. The tower at Sand, which you pretended to describe. Paul knew I'd stayed there when I was a child. When he suggested I should go to his apartment to meet his wife, he knew I'd refuse because I was always paralyzingly shy with women. And he knew I had no head for heights. He'd heard what had happened to Maurice Le Riche. The day we went to tea at the Gare Lafayette, was that Paul's idea you should take me there? Oh. Did I still suffer from vertigo? I see. Yes, that day he came to see me, he was surprised I was living on the fourth floor. Oh, yes. He knew all that. On the day you drove me to Saint Nicolas, Paul drove his wife there, but he first gave you her amber necklace. He also knew exactly what she would be wearing because she wore only black or grey. Yes, and I was to wear almost the same. You were to identify the body. The clothes were important. They had already climbed to the top of the tower... Paul kills her, he waits for you, you put the necklace on her dead body and the lighter I gave you in her handbag. Yes. Paul knew I would never climb out onto that ledge to get past the locked door. And then you both threw her body from the top of the church tower and waited for me to go down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you thought I'd call in the police and that's where it began to go wrong. Yes. Her body was so disfigured by the fall. There was only the necklace, the lighter, the clothes. I would identify the body as Madeleine Javine. Yes. Well, you chose the church very well. And the time in the village was deserted. The men working in the fields, the women at siesta. Yes. Hmm. After you'd murdered her, how did you leave the church? Well, there was a second way out at the side of the altar. Paul had parked his car the opposite side of the village from which you and I entered. And you knew I'd go straight down to the square. Oh, yes. And that photograph on his desk was of you. That's why he made a point of asking me to go and see him at the office. It was specially taken for me. Mm. And the necklace. You still have the necklace. I only saw Paul once after that day. He gave me some of her jewellery. He said that if ever I should have to leave France, it could be sold. I didn't call in the police that afternoon. I didn't tell Paul the truth, because I would have had to admit it was my cowardice that killed Madeleine, just as it was my cowardice that had killed Maurice Le Riche. When I left Paris, I went to Nice. I let my hair grow back to its natural shade. It had been dyed Madeleine's colour. I dressed as I wanted to dress. I hated all her elegance. For Paul, it was not easy. Wives do not normally commit suicide by jumping from the bell tower of a village church. 
He couldn't produce an alibi between three and four that afternoon, and he should have been in the office. But he was in the bell tower of the church at San Nicola. And then someone had seen me driving towards the village square with you, and then driving away alone. The police thought that person was poor. So? When I agreed to come and live with you, I thought I could make you believe in René Sourange. I had changed the colour of my hair, my style of dressing, everything. There was only one thing I hadn't changed. <laughs> my perfume. Madeleine. The only woman I'd ever loved. Gentle, sensitive, elegant. A woman who never existed. René Sourange. Common, vulgar, Madeleine who once said she loved me. I did love you. Madeleine. Roger. Mm. Please. Please don't. The woman, Renée Sourange, confessed to you that with Paul Gervin, she had planned and murdered Madeleine Gervin. Yes. And you admit you loved this woman? Yes, I loved her. We accept your evidence, but murder has been committed, even if the victim herself has been party to murder. You are remanded for trial. I hope that both the judge and jury of your fellow men will judge you with mercy and compassion. I still love her. She will come back to me. In Obsession by Pierre Boileau and Thomas Nashjack, translated and adapted for radio by Michael Voisy, Flavier was played by Peter Jeffrey, Madeleine, Sarah Bedell, Paul, Nigel Stock, Traboul and hotel receptionist, David Graham, Le Riche, John Rowe, examining magistrate, Hayden Jones, the inspector and commentator, Ian Clegg, waiter, Leonard Cracknell, Secretary and Marseille concierge, Alison Gollings, Parisian concierge and second saleswoman, Eva Haddon, first saleswoman and Parisian bistro woman, Maddie Head, Javine's servant and Marseille bistro woman, Elizabeth Oakley. The play was produced by Martin Jenkins. <laughs>